and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Junior Garcia, and here are some of the stories we have for you tonight. A bloody weekend in St. Thomas as we had two homicides. The St. Croix Boy Scout earns the Eagle Scout Award and high school basketball in your sports for a 1-1 update. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. Channel 8 is brought to you by Body Beast. Call in the Virgin Islands 1 800 458 6815 for Body Beast. This program is the real deal. If you knew me a while ago and you see me today, you'd be like, man, what are you doing? I'm doing Body Beast. I decided to try Body Beast because I was looking for something different. I wanted to lose weight at the same time gain muscle. It's easy. In our top story, in the hospital ground area in St. Thomas at about 9.30 p.m. on Sunday, gunfire rang out, leaving two men shot multiple times. One of the two men, identified by family members as Lakeel Wade in his 20s, was rushed to the Snyder Regional Medical Center and placed on life support because he sustained a gunshot wound to the head. The doctors told families that Wade, if he survived, would essentially become a vegetable. And so he was pulled from life support these sources said the violence at hospital ground in St. Thomas last night was gang related. These sources told us, adding that Wade was involved in a killing at Savan St. Thomas some time ago, but was held in prison as a suspect. More recently, however, Wade was released back into the community because the case was thrown out of the court. According to these sources, Wade, who was married, was about to have dinner with his wife earlier that night when he received a call. Then he told his wife he would be right back, jumped into a black car with a friend and drove to hospital ground. When they arrived at the location, Wade pulled out a gun and started firing at members of a rival gang who had visited hospital ground looking for someone to shoot. The rival gang fired back at Wade and his friend, forcing Wade to get out of the car, which led him to being hit in the head by a bullet. The other man who sustained gunshot wounds along with Wade has not yet been identified. However, he's in stable condition at the Snyder Regional Medical Center. The shots were so loud that police curtained off the entire area around the Lionel Roberts Stadium in St. Thomas, including Blackbeards around the field, Jai Yard, and nearby neighborhoods. It's not known yet if police were successful in capturing the suspects and calls placed to the Virgin Islands Police Department as of press time, were not returned. In other news, 39-year-old Anthony Charles was shot to death at Cokey Point Beach in St. Thomas Saturday night. Police was dispatched to the scene at about 8.45 p.m. and found Charles lying near the beach's vendor buildings. St. Thomas Police Chief Darren Foy said Charles appeared to have sustained gunshot wounds to the body but he added there was no more information to be shared with the public at this time, and he urges anyone with any information to call 911 or Crime Stoppers. Meanwhile, Senator Kenneth Gittins, chairman of the Committee on Rules and Judiciary, today calls for the police commissioner nominee to step up enforcement initiatives, especially in high crime areas of the territory. It is quite troubling that right here at home, in our small family-oriented community that says tourism is our leading product, we could not get by the first month of the new year without experiencing five senseless killings. There is no reason why anyone should be denied the freedom to traverse the streets of where we call home, and no reason why anyone should not feel safe going to or coming off our beaches. Coming from the police department myself as a senior ranking officer not too long ago, I am fully aware of the limited manpower resources within the department. However, the department's performance goals calls for the maximization of operational efficiency and effectiveness. In order to do so, 
we must shift manpower around and put the boots on the ground where they would count the most. Uh, with a global economy that's rebounding, we as a small territory cannot afford to let few thugs continue to take over our streets. I am confident, however, that Governor Mapp shares the same sentiments. While he too comes from a law enforcement background, and will do everything within his authority to address the crime situation that's been plaguing us as a territory for the last several years. I too, as a key stakeholder in this, will continue my pursuit of measures aimed at addressing this critical problem in coordination and collaboration with other stakeholders. Stay with us, we have more news straight ahead. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. And welcome back to News Channel 8. The Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs has issued a warning about scams circulating throughout the area in which callers attempt to obtain personal information. Currently, there have been reports to customers receiving fraudulent phone calls from individuals claiming to represent local communications companies, according to a statement issued Friday by DLCA. The caller falsely states there is a security breach that they need to address and request information to be able to access the customer's computer remotely. Once the customer provides the necessary information, the customer is no longer able to access their computer. According to DLCA, a number of new, less obvious types of scams have presented themselves in the Virgin Islands, resulting in new customer complaints. The old procedures of sending emails, telephone calls, invoices, bank checks, or letters have been enhanced or replaced by a newer and more sophisticated formats, such as enticements and requests for information from businesses that advertise locally and nationally, according to the department. Sensitive and private information should never be disclosed over the phone, by computer, or other communication-capable devices unless the consumer is completely certain that they are dealing with reputable individuals or businesses, according to DLCA. Meanwhile, Philip Kenneth Edwards of Syncroy has earned the highest advancement award the Boy Scouts of America offers to Scouts, the Eagle Scout Award. He will be recognized at an Eagle Court of Honor ceremony on Saturday, February 7, 2015, at 6.30 p.m. at the Good Hope Country Day School Pavilion. Philip will become the 16th Scout to attain this high honor in Troop 7227, chartered by Good Hope Country Day School. To attain the rank of Eagle Scout, the candidate must earn 21 merit badges, 13 of which are specifically required and successfully complete a community-related service project. Philip worked closely with Youth with a Mission St. Croix, also known as YWAM, to design and build an aquaponic system to assist YWAM and to reduce its food cost. This is an integrated system that combines fish and plants to help each other grow. Philip planned and executed this project by leading a group of 22 scouts and adult volunteers from YWAM staff and friends over a period of weeks. Congratulations. Stay tuned, we have more news up next. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. And finally, tonight, here is Stephen Koo Francis with your Sports 411 update. Thanks a lot, Junior. We kick things off with some high school varsity basketball that took place this weekend as we had the undefeated Good Hope Country Day Panthers taking on the St. Joseph Saints. Well, the Panthers was all over the Saints like white and rice as they had them... <coughs> coughing up the ball early as the Saints turnovers were turned into points as the Panthers full court press 
was more heavy than the start you get at your regular dry cleaners. The Panthers led 24-3 after the first quarter of play. Second quarter, things didn't get better for the Saints. Oh, oh, oh no. See, what, what happened was, oh boy, who does that? At the half, the Panthers led 35-7. to Second half, the Panthers said to Jordan Hill, have good passing skills for a big man here with the give and go. Oh, nicely done. Nicely done, son. Then Hill attracts the double team and kicks it out to a wide open teammate who buries the three-pointer as the Panthers remain undefeated with a 71-28 win over the Saints. K. James, M. Gray, and A. O'Neill each had 11 points for the Panthers. After the game, I spoke to the Panthers head coach and Senkua new basketball commissioner, Earl Baker. Well, everything starts with preparation, as you know, Koo. Use a ball yourself, so you know everything is preparation, and I know that, so I prepare my teams and get them ready. If we're going to play, we're going to come prepared, and, and, and that's what it's all about. Um, this season, I expect it to be a great season. We had two additional teams added, uh, St. Joseph and Seven-Day Adventist. And we got a 15 game series gonna go on. You know, 15 games is the most games we had around here in years. So even the teams who are young teams, they're gonna have a chance to develop because of the amount of games they gain. In addition to the tournaments we're gonna be played. So um, we have a good team. I, I stress defense, so that's what I look for from my team. I know we could score the basketball, but you know, I think we also have good teams in, in, in Central High, of course, and, and complex. So, like I said, all in all, I, I expect a tough season and I expect a great season, but they go watch out for us because I know how to play this game and I know how to win. So once the troops are ready, we're going to gonna make it a game. So we urge everybody to try and come out and see the games, come out and support the children. You know, we don't have, as you can see, if, if Koof pass the camera around the stands you know we ain't seen no parents okay we have a handful of parents and that's probably for one school or next school you know we don't have the kind of support we need for our kids so like i said um i am the new commissioner of basketball for st croix and we plan to make changes um we can't just jump in and make drastic changes one time but we're gonna make some changes and basketball is going to be better so Give thanks for Channel 8 for this interview. And again, I urge the parents and the fans and, you know, t uh, teammates, classmates, everybody come out and, and make the, the, the games more enjoyable. You know, turn it up. Turn it up. Next up for the Panthers is the Central High Caribs. And Baker said his team is ready for this one and they're not going to lie down. Yeah, that's, that's a marquee game. I, I expect the gym to be packed then. Like I said, it, it's on a Monday, but... That's a marquee game because um, rival, you know, uh, Good Hope Country Day now, past Country Day has always been in the mix with Central, whether it's the girls or or, or the boys. Uh, last year, our JV team won won the championship, and you know they've been talking payback and stuff. But Central is the is the top notch, you know. We 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 can hide that fact, you know. That's they 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 known as the best team best high school right now because they have some seniors who are on top of their game um, first class a team you know what i mean so um you know the game gonna be good though because we ain't laying down in the second game the education complex barracudas was taking on the seven day adventists well the barrels was looking to bounce back after that overtime loss to the panthers well the barrels was out trapping forcing turnovers Jamie Coker with the finger roll. Two of his 17 points. Seven-day answer back with Max Wilson down low with the kiss off the glass. At the half, Complex led 38 to 18. Second half, D Malone was giving out invitation to his black party. Oh, you got to learn to live with rejection, son. Well, but Wilson, he got his teammate back. Malone on the offensive end, too big, too strong. Folks, you can't teach tall. Later, Kiron Book with the steal and the layup with Dad looking on. Hey, Phil, hey, you remember when we used to do that? Yeah, dog. That was it. As the Barracudas went on to win 90-41, to Malone led the way with 21 points. 
Wilson, he had 19 for 7 days. Moving along to the national scene, Super Bowl 49, Patriots, Seahawks pick it up in the final 70 seconds of the game. Jermaine Curse with the incredible, spectacular, memorable catch. Settle driving, trailing by four points, huge completion. And that sets up with 25 seconds to go, second and goal. Everyone thinking and expecting Seattle to run, but they pass. Who does that? Russell Wilson picked off by Malone Butler. The butler did it. Hey, Coach Pete Carroll, why you pass on the one-yard line? We had sent in our personnel. They'd sent in goal line. It's not the right matchup for us to run the football. So we, on second down, we throw the ball really to kind of waste that play. If we score, we do. If we don't, then we'll run it in on third and fourth down. Really with n no second thoughts and no hesitation in that at all. At that moment, I didn't want to waste a run play against, against their goal line guys. Throw the ball. We'll come. We'll win on third and fourth down. We can match up. It was, so it's really, it's a really clear thought. It wasn't something that happened out. You know, it was a clear thought, but it didn't work out right. We we happened to throw them the ball, and, and, and you know, and they make the big play. So congratulations to the New England Patriots. That's a look at your sports 411 update. I'm Stephen Cook Francis from News Channel 8. Back to you, Junior. Stay tuned. We have your weather coming up next. Your weather, coming up next. Your weather. And here's a look at your local weather. Tonight, isolated showers, mostly clear with the low around 74. East wind 18 to 21 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. On Tuesday, sunny with a high near 85. East wind 16 to 18 miles per hour. On Tuesday night, isolated showers, mostly clear with the low around 73. East wind around 15 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. And on Wednesday, isolated showers, sunny with a high near 85. East wind around 15 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 10%. On Wednesday night, isolated showers, mostly clear with the low around 72. East wind around 16 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. And on Thursday morning, isolated showers, sunny with a high near 84. East wind around 16 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. This is Cheryl Francis with your Channel 8 News Weather. Thank you for tuning in. That's a look at what's happening here in the territory. On the behalf of WSVI News Channel 8, thank you. I'm Junior Garcia, and World News is up next. Good night, Virgin Islands. News Channel 8 is brought to you by Body Beast. Call in the Virgin Islands, 1-800-458-6815 for Body Beast. This program is the real deal. If you knew me a while ago and you see me today, you'd be like, man, what are you doing? I'm doing Body Beast. I decided to try Body Beast because I was looking for something different. I wanted to lose weight and at the same time gain muscle. It's easy.